All right, so welcome to the uh, College Basketball Times wheelchair college basketball pregame show. I am with the superstar, uh, Caitlin Eaton, formerly of University of Illinois' wheelchair team, Team USA. She won, now correct me if I'm wrong here, Caitlin, you won a bronze with Team USA at the Paralympics, a silver at the Para pan american games yeah there you go and you uh <laughs> that's good for me we're on a we're on a good start there um i i am dave Barron, the uh president uh grand poobah if you will of <laughs> college basketball times if you aren't familiar with college basketball times we are a non-profit organization dedicated to uh equality uh, in, in college basketball, we cover all level of college basketball equally, including it's a fill in the blank for you there, Caitlin. Wheelchair basketball. Yes, we do. <laughs> Wheelchair basketball. Yes. Very good. All right. So we are going to be uh, previewing the big tournament in Alabama. I believe there's a name for this tournament. Is there a name for this tournament? I, I have no written idea. here. The Hollier Winter Bash. Is that possible? There you go. Could Sounds be. Good. <laughs> we don't know. Um, all right. That is tournament. Big tournament this coming weekend, Alabama. So we're going to start off with what to watch for at this tournament. Are we ready for this, Caitlin? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So what to watch for, of course, other than this incredible pregame show. Yes. We will be telling Most them what. Yes. <laughs> yes. There you go. All right, Caitlin, tell us what to watch for at this tournament. We're going to start with the women's teams, obviously. Of course. Yes. Uh, obviously. And you know, yeah. And, you know, we're starting with my alma mater, Illinois. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the things I think we really need to watch for is Mary Wagstaff and Morgan McCammon. Uh, they're two big girls on Illinois, and I think they'll really open up some space for Ramley Clayton. For the record, it was Caitlin who referred to them as big, not me. I did not say that. That's that's okay. Yeah, they good are... clarification. Okay, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, so I think if they are dominant in the paint and they're making their layups, I think this Illinois team is going to be really tough to beat because they're going to be getting in behind Ranley Clayton, who's an incredible scorer from the outside. Ah, Ranley Clayton. You know where you can find a great story about Ranley Clayton? Where's that? That would be collegebasketballtimes.com. Yes. Perfect. A wonderful Perfect. cover story on Ranley Clayton. We, we root for her. She's just a great, great story. All yeah, right. Absolutely. So you think Illinois could do well. And that is a wholly unbiased opinion on your yeah, part. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who else we got on the women's side? You know, we're going to jump over to Whitewater. Whitewater. I think this Whitewater team is really, really young. And they have some, some girls who have some serious potential. Um, but I think what we watch for with them is how their new coach, Jake Schaefer, um, fills the shoes of Christina Schwab. She stepped away this season. And so how does he take over this team after having such an incredible basketball player being their coach for a while? So I think that's something we got to watch. That is true. We know Christina Schwab at uh, College Basketball Time. She is on our advisory board. We are very, very proud to have Christina Schwab associated nice. with us. We don't know that the feeling is mutual, but that doesn't matter. She is associated with us and that is a good <laughs> thing for us. All right. So that's Whitewater. Who's next? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Now we're going to move on to UTA. Okay. Um, they also have a pretty young team um, and it'll be led by Zoe Voris. Um, she's a team USA premier and she is, you know, going to have to really work on her leadership skills this year. Um, she's going to have to lead this young team to victory. And if she can do that well, I think they have a really, really good chance of maybe pulling some upsets. Gotcha. Now, remind me, is uh, Elodie Tessier still on the team? She is. She, she still is. is. She is. So she's with uh, Team Canada. Am I not mistaken? So she's yes, pretty she good. Yes, on Team Canada. Gotcha. She's yes. And you know where you can find a story about LOD Tessier? Tell me. Collegebasketballtimes.com. <laughs> yes. Yes. We did a story Perfect. on her. She is nothing but sunshine. Um, yes. yes. LOD. So that's UTA. All right. I believe yes. there is one more team in the women's tournament. 
Yeah, the home team, Alabama. Um, I think the biggest thing to watch for them is they have one of their stars coming back this semester. Uh, Lindsay Zerbrug will be back. She's just an absolute scorer from anywhere on the court. Lindsay Zerbrug. We did a cover story. Our first ever cover story for College Basketball Times was on Lindsay Zerbrug. That's a good person to do it on. Um, But watching her play with uh, their new freshman, who's been absolutely dominant, Excel Gonzalez, their Team USA teammates, and to see them on the court together collegiately is going to be something to watch for sure. And College Basketball Times is Alabama ranked number one in uh, the women's wheelchair category, but also number 13 in our overall domination rankings, which includes all teams, all levels. Alabama with women's wheelchair is the 13th most dominant team in the country. That's probably a good place for them. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. (laughs) All right. On to the the secondary gender. Yes, yes. Let's move to the men. All right. (laughs) You know, of course, we're going to start with Illinois again. Um, of course, makes sense. Yeah, of course, of course. Should have worn an orange tie. What's wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, what's this about? <laughs> um, yeah, something to watch for them. They have a new grad student here. Um, he is a Whitewater alum. His name is Ryan Glachek, and he is really going to be a strong addition to this Illini team. Uh, he's another 4-5, or five, and that, that makes their bench pretty big. And so he's going to bring a lot of speed, a lot of shooting, um, and a lot of height to the. See, I'm line, guessing uh, that Ryan does not he's... mind being called a big. Big, big is not a bad. No, no, no. none of them. Are guy. Big. All right, who we got after exactly, Whitewater? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so then we got Whitewater. We're going to go Whitewater again. Um, somebody to watch for them is they are also adding a new student this semester and Jeremy Meyer. He's an incredible outside shooter and he's going to really play into this offense very well. Jake Williams is running this offense and he loves a good outside shooter. And so I think Jeremy Meyer is going to fit in perfectly at Whitewater this season. Gotcha. All right. Next on the men's side. Let's jump to Arizona. Arizona. Uh, Yeah. Let's jump to Arizona. I think Arizona right now is super dominant. They're undefeated, um, but we have quite a few undefeated teams right now. I think Illinois is undefeated. Um, Alabama's lost one game, I think, but they're still being very dominant. Um, And Arizona's undefeated. Arizona Um, is not only a little dominant. They are number 20. Let me see. I have them at 22 on the College Basketball Times domination rankings, ranking ahead of teams like Houston and Purdue Div 1 men's teams. They are that dominant. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah, they're very, very good. Okay. Yeah. And I think, you know, someone to watch on that Arizona team is Blaze. Blaze. Um, yes, Blaze. We know Blaze. Guess you what we Blaise. did for Blaze? What'd you do for Blaze? We did a cover story on Blaze. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Yeah, he has an incredible story. So if you if you want to check that out, definitely check it out at College Basketball Times. Dot com. Um, dot com, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's a big guy. He's dominant. Um, I think, you know, something important about him is he's a three five. So he's, you know, not gonna have as much ability as some of these other big guys, but he's definitely very dominant out there. So what to watch? Definitely watch Blaze for Arizona. Uh we'll move on to Auburn. 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 Um, you know, Auburn is is a young team. They have some vets on their team, but somebody to watch for them is Sam Armas. Um, I think he told me the stat. He's got quite a few rebounds, huh? 18 rebounds in one game. That's incredible. Now, you're the expert here. That, that's got to be a lot, isn't it? 18 is pretty significant. So that's impressive. That's watch out for him. Box him out. out for him. Yeah, box him out. Definitely if you're if you're an athlete playing this weekend, box Sam Armas out. All right. Who else we got? Do we have one more team? Yeah, we're gonna finish with the home team, Alabama. They are absolutely dominant, just like their women's program. But I think somebody we gotta watch for this team is Peter Barry. Their team, you know, runs through Ignacio a lot. But if Peter Barry is hitting those outside shots then they're going to be really tough to stop because you're going to have to jump him and stop Ignacio. So what to watch Peter Barry. You know, there's something about Peter Barry. (laughs) 
you can find a cover story about Peter Barry on collegebasketballtimes.com. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. Yes. <laughs> That's all awesome. right. So is that it? That's what That's we want the to watch for. All right. So we got another segment. Are we ready for this other segment? Let's it is do going it. to be Caitlin's clarification. Okay. All right. So you're going to clarify some stuff. Every time we do one of these, these pregame shows, we go to you, our expert, to clarify some things. Perfect. So what are we clarifying today? Where okay. do people have some confusion in the world of wheelchair college hoops? That you yeah. Can- I think, you know, we got to clarify what our classification system looks like. Um, as I was saying, when we were, you know, going and what to watch, um, I said, you know, the terms 4.5 a lot, 3.5. What does that mean? Um, some people, I think, have very, very little knowledge as to what our classification system is. So, um, you know, for for our sport, there is a, a, a large level of ability between athletes. And so in order to make it as fair as possible, we have what we call the classification system. And that ranges anywhere from a 1.5 all the way, I mean, a 1.0, excuse me, to a 4.5. And basically what that means is you have a group of classifiers, they're trained medical professionals, and they watch the athletes play. And then there's criteria that they go off of to help them determine what classification that athlete is. And what classification were you? Yeah, I'm a 1.5. Good question. Or a 1.5. I'm a 1.5. But yes. number one in our hearts, let's be honest. Yeah, always. Number one, always yes. number one in your heart. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a 1.5. And so when you get into those 0.5 classifications, it com- becomes a little bit confusing. Um, and basically all that means is I have characteristics of a 1.0 and I have characteristics of a 2.0. So I don't fit into either box. And so I am put right in the middle. I am a 1.5. <laughs> See, now I have characteristics of two things. My wife says I have characteristics of a nice guy and a jerk. So where oh. would that, that would, yeah, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm, like a, I'm, a, I'm a 4.1. I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I don't know if that's in the criteria, no, but. <laughs> it's, it's, all right, that's okay. So we've got these classifications. And if my mm-hmm. understanding is correct, you can only have 14 points on the court at a time. Correct. So within your five players, you can only add up to 14. You can have less than 14 if you so choose, but you can't go over 14 points. Gotcha. And whose responsibility? What happens if you have more than 14 on the court? Yeah, if you have more than 14, it's up to the other coach to let them know, and that'll be a technical foul. Technical Um, foul. All right. So then there's math involved with this game. There's a lot of math and it's that's, generally that's, falling that's, on the head. And fractions on top of it. You got 0. 0.5s. That's yeah. See, so like the 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 other coaches that gotta add up, the, the refs gotta do the fraction. That's that's a lot. That's that's that might be too much. Um wow. Yeah, Sorry, so you gotta add that up. Do now you guys everybody gets jersey numbers, correct? So if you have a jersey number, wouldn't it be correct? Wouldn't it be more helpful if your jersey number was your category number? Then the refs could be out there adding it up as you're playing along. That would be my recommendation for the game. I, did we lose Caitlin for a second? Caitlin is back. So yeah, what I'm was back. your Sorry. jersey number when you played for USA? Was it 21 or was it? Uh, 21, yes, 21. 21. I think, yeah. Yeah, but it should be 1.5. That would help me if I was a ref. Adding it up, having it out there, though maybe it might even cause more confusion. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we want to say about the uh, classification system? You know, the only thing I want to say about it is it's very nuanced and it is very difficult. Even the players sometimes have an issue with like, what's that person's classification? What's that person's classification? Um, But at the end of the day, all you're doing is playing against somebody based on their skills. You don't really play anybody based off their classification. So you know, a 1.0 could be an absolute threat. You know, Ranley Clayton, for example, is a 1.5, and she's absolutely dominant as a shooter. So you're not really playing people based off of classification. You're playing them based on their skill level. Gotcha. Gotcha. I That makes sense. That, that <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. So that's our clarification on the classification system. Yeah. I think we should get like a uh, – a, a sponsor on this like you know we should be sponsored by like clearasil 
clear yeah. or Claritin. Um, you work on that. You got your, you're the big time person. You set yeah, I work up. on it. <laughs> All right. We got another segment here, which we're calling Squirrel Stats. Why are we calling it Squirrel Stats? Because Caitlin is, is the squirrel. Now, are you the squirrel or just squirrel? Just squirrel, just squirrel. Not we the squirrel. So there could no. be more squirrels. You're not the only squirrel. Well, as far as I know, I am the only squirrel. You but... are the only squirrel. So why, why, why shouldn't it be the squirrel? Like somebody see, like some little kid says, oh, wait, that's, you know, Caitlin Eaton. That's the squirrel. Or they would just say, that's squirrel. I, I think they should say the squirrel. I'm kind of on board with that, actually. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yes. There's the squirrel. All yeah. right. So squirrel. Time for squirrel stats. Yeah. Okay. Now give us like one stat, men, women, we should really be watching out for. So this kind of overlaps with our watch out, but give me some stats. We mentioned uh, the, 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 the kid on Auburn who rebounds, but give us, give us something new, some stats, men, women for this upcoming tournament. Yeah, of course. You know, I think the, the biggest stat that we have is, is from Ali Abanez at Illinois for the women. Um, over a two-game span, she scored 53 points. Wow. Insane. 30 against Arizona and 23 against Whitewater. Um, that is a pretty large scoring streak. And, and who, for, again, does she happen to play for? She plays for my alma mater, Illinois. <laughs> there you go. All right. Again, that's just coincidental. Yeah, All right. <laughs> what do we got on the men's side? On the men's side, I think one of the people we got to look out for is at, is at Whitewater, uh, Thomas Oberst. He shot 50% from the three-point line in a game against the Illini, and it was a super close game. Uh, so you got to jump him pretty, pretty much anywhere at this point. <laughs> there you go. All right. So we got our squirrel stats. Yeah. That's 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 a segment that that our audience just loves. We, we, we know that. <laughs> All right, last segment. Fan favorite coming up is, of course, Eaton with Eaton. Eaton with Eaton. Caitlin Eaton. Eaton with Eaton. So we <laughs> ask you, Ms. Squirrel, yes. talk to us. What is something that maybe the fans should be eating during the games here? They're kicking back. They want to maybe have a meal, maybe want to have a snack. What? What is? What should they be Eaton, according to Eaton. Listen, you know, if I'm watching a good basketball game, which all of these are going to be amazing, you got to have pizza. Pizza. You just have to have pizza. <laughs> Any particular pizza? You want Chicago-style pizza, New York-style pizza? What kind of pizza are we looking for? Well, listen, they're in Illinois right now, so it's got to be Chicago-style. <laughs> this, this has turned into a bit of a plug for <laughs> Illinois. That's okay. That's okay. So Chicago style, that that's not like that, that's like a meal right there. Yeah, it's a it's meal. A, it's a Chicago style. You know, you, you eat two pieces of that and you're you're full. That's yeah. that's, that's something there. All well, right. So that is what you recommend the for these games. Get yourself some Chicago style pizza, yes. kick back and watch some wonderful hoops. That's eating with eating. All eaten right. Eaten. <laughs> All right. I think we did relatively well for this uh, this pregame show here. Yeah. Um, any last comments there, Miss Squirrel? Yeah, just enjoy some good basketball. I think it's going to be a really fun weekend, and I'm excited to watch the games. And I think your fellow squirrels are disappointed <laughs> that you did not suggest nuts as mm -hmm. as the food to be eating. Can you have the nuts with the pizza or no? Yeah, absolutely. Unless you have a peanut allergy. Unless. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Some health tip as yeah. well. That's, yeah. There you go. That's good. All right. There's your pregame show. Uh, good enough. Thank you so much. Enjoy the games. Thank you.